but his victories and the kindness of strangers made an extraordinary difference in his life. Here's NBC's Bob Dotson. Out here on the cliffs of St. Lawrence, Newfoundland, the wind can sound like hell's idea of music. Blizzards blow through in biblical proportions. One of them, in February 1942, bullied the U.S. Navy destroyer Truxton onto these rocks, offering Lanier Phillips a terrible choice. And every time a wave would come, it would wash maybe 10, 15 people overboard. But the 18-year-old mess attendant clung to that sinking ship for five hours because he was sure he'd be lynched if he tried to go ashore. I felt that I was the lowest, the least, and the last. Uh, because that's the way I had been treated all my life. Phillips had lived a childhood of desperate fear. The Ku Klux Klan burned down his school in rural Georgia. In the segregated south of the 1940s... I had no dreams. I had nothing to look forward to. So he joined the Navy, even though the only job the Navy offered a black man back then was servant. Now, dangling above frigid waters, Phillips shouted to three other black mess attendants. You're gonna die if you stay on board. And ice was forming on all our bodies. Phillips dropped into the last raft. What happened to these guys? Well, they all died. They froze to death. Along with 107 shipmates. But Phillips and 46 others survived because villagers from St. Lawrence rappelled down these ice-covered cliffs. These people took a chance on losing their life to come down and help us. We needed help. Some of them are in terrible shape, terrible, terrible shape. Levi Pike was 18, working in a mine behind the cliffs. Sometimes you'd run out to get one, and you'd miss them because the sea had drawn them back again, you know. You had to run back yourself then to keep, to keep from getting carried away. Phillips, coated in oil, was carted off to a makeshift hospital. Oh, when I woke up, I, I was stark naked. I, you know, and terrified. Lot Kelly and a friend, two white women, were frantically trying to scrape off the oil that covered his body. She said, Lot, you know, I can't get him clean. I can't get him white. And he, he looked up and he said, no. I said, you can't get it off. It's the color of the skin. That was the first black man they had ever seen. A lifetime passed before the old sailor returned to St. Lawrence. Stove was here, bed was back there, and that's where I slept that night. Lot Kelly had sad news. Her friend, who had stayed up all night heating stones to keep him warm, was dead. I didn't even get a chance to thank her for her hospitality. Or tell her how he'd lived the life she saved. Phillips retired from the Navy after 20 years, but not the sea. He worked for the explorer Jacques Cousteau, helped locate a lost nuclear bomb. Later, faced down bigots with guns while marching for civil rights. That plunge into these icy waters off the coast of Newfoundland left him fearless. Phillips tells young sailors and soldiers to search for caring in unexpected places. Something came over me. It was etched in my mind that all white people were not racist. Hey, thank you for sharing your story. I really appreciate that. At 79, he believes his life really began in St. Lawrence. The town's mine is now closed. Half the people are gone. But Phillips did something for the 1,600 who remain. Built a new playground with an old sailor's name. When the Truxton collided with the cliffs and rocks in St. Lawrence, Newfoundland, I collided with my destiny. The man who desperately needed a hand now offered his. These people, they didn't just save my life. That's a minor part of it. They changed it. Forever with a simple act of kindness. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, St. Lawrence, Newfoundland. 7.46 on a Thursday morning. We're back right after these messages.